trick. Just come out to the zappy to put it on a uh, reduced charge, fast charge, and notice these um, shadows. I don't know if you can quite see them on the wall. Basically, it's the tree. But thankfully, up to the roof of the panels, there's no shading. There probably will be, though, um, peak winter. So, um, yeah, won't look forward to early morning lack of sunshine with shading then. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the end of September, time for an energy and solar update. And this is as good a place to start as any, I think, that the sun is getting lower in the sky and these trees, starting from east to west, are gradually going to become more of a problem as the weeks and months pass. Um, basically, the sun gets lower, the angle gets worse, we have some obstructions in the way at certain times of day, so solar generation is gradually going to get less as we go through the winter months. So to give you an idea, this was the 19th of September at about half past seven in the morning, just waiting for the sun to rise above the trees before we get some generation. Our solar panels are pointing almost directly south, and hence by the time midday gets here, the sun is directly overhead, and hence we get some shade on the eastern side of the house. And that's our solar panels, 6.3 kilowatts with two inverters. One's a 3.68 kilowatt inverter and the other just a 2 kilowatt inverter. So 6.3 kilowatts of solar, 5.68 kilowatts available through the inverters. Let's start with the bad news and that's 2021 in green has been lower in generation in each of the quarters of the year so far. So it hasn't been as good a solar year as it was last year or the year before that, and of course that's only as long as I've had the panels so far. But some good news, we did generate more in September than we did in August. 638 kilowatt hours versus 592 in August. So what's that? Roughly 10% more? Comparing September over the last three years, it's quite amazing that uh, it's quite static and very consistent. But this September is just down slightly on last year, and one of the reasons for that is probably this Huawei inverter. It doesn't quite generate as much as the Solus inverter did. So we might have exceeded September from last year even if we'd had the same inverter. I'll never know, I guess. So just looking at the Huawei inverter this month, that's 394 kilowatt hours that we generated compared to 416 kilowatt hours last September. And again, as you might expect with the seasons, you can see a drop off in generation at the end of September. And our 2.4 kilowatt solar edge array, that generated 244 kilowatt hours, very, very close to last September's value of 240 kilowatt hours. The only problem with looking at these historical numbers is when you look at October last year, you can see that we generated only 111 kilowatt hours. That's less than half what we generated this month. So October, it's going to be pretty lean, isn't it, if it follows the example of other years. With a little bit more sunshine this month, we exported more too. 213 kilowatt hours this month. Why do we export so much energy? It's because we're so economical. We don't use a lot of energy in the house, and if we happen to be out in the mini electric, there's nowhere else to put the energy, so it has to go back out to the grid. Our import from the grid has gone up from 7 kilowatt hours last month to a little over 9 kilowatt hours this month, and most of that was a 2 kilowatt hour boost of uh, hot water, which prompted us to change energy tariff at the beginning of the month. So now we're on the Octopus Go tariff. We spent a whopping £8.57 on those 9 kilowatt hours. Huge bill for the month. And surprise, surprise, now that we've started using a little bit of energy first thing in the morning, Go is now cheaper than Agile. So we swapped at the perfect time. Talking of good timing, we also got a very cheap tariff as well, which is now fixed for 12 months, two weeks before they put the prices up. So we're paying 4.5 pence during the cheap period, that's uh, for three hours, and 15.96 pence at all other times. 
Okay, so where did we put all that solar energy that we generated? Well, you can see here from the My Energy app that we put 111 kilowatt hours into the eddy, that's to heat our hot water. And 145 kilowatt hours went into the Mini Electric via the Zappi. We also charged on public and destination charges and added 53 kilowatt hours to the Mini this month, which is quite rare for us. But we only spent about four pounds on that. Most of it was free at the destination or pod point charges. And the last number on this chart, 157 kilowatt hours, was general house usage. And that leaves battery usage, the Huawei 5 kilowatt hour battery that we have at the moment. We put 117 kilowatt hours into that and took out 113 kilowatt hours. Being a DC connected battery, that's a hybrid inverter, the efficiency is really good. So that's the stats for the month, but what about some observations during the month? Well, one of them is how many kilowatt hours we've generated in the year so far. So looking at this chart, this is for the Solus inverter that we had installed before the Huawei inverter. That's 2.2 megawatt hours generated up until June. Add in 1.27 megawatt hours from the Huawei inverter over the last three months and 2.03 megawatt hours from the Solar Edge Array. That's a total of 5.52 megawatt hours for the year up until the end of September. How have you done? How much have you generated for the year so far? And this Solar Edge app, that's pretty accurate for import and export. So 1.47 megawatt hours exported and 0.36, that's only 360 kilowatt hours imported from the grid all year, including winter from January. And the solar generation number, that's great for comparing across sites, so comparing my system to your own. That's the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt P. So you take the total number of kilowatt hours you've generated, divide that by the maximum power output of the panels that you have, and that gives you the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels. And I achieved just over 101 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. How did you get on? And lastly, a little bit of trivia from our smart plugs. We had a smart plug with energy monitor on the washing machine this month. And I couldn't believe it when I saw that a 30 degree economy wash only used 0.23 of a kilowatt hour for that wash. That's the equivalent of about four cups of tea. I'm really surprised how little energy it used. And a 40 degree economy wash, that was only 0.32 of a kilowatt hour, just 90 watt hours more. And the total for the month, that's 2.18 kilowatt hours, which is just over nine wash loads at a 30 degree wash. That's what we tend to use. I'm quite surprised how low that is. Two kilowatt hours and nine wash loads in a month. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that a low number or a high number? I'm really not sure, but there's no tumble drying on that either. We uh, put the washing on a line outside and air dry it. Doesn't use any electricity at all. And sadly, this month, there's no progress on the wind turbine that I've mentioned before, no progress on additional solar panels on this end wall, and no progress on my own home storage battery, which will replace the Huawei one. So hopefully we'll have some updates soon, but uh, it's a busy time for solar installers. There's a lot of installations going in. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to leave your statistics, your solar generation, in the comments below, including the kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. Have you got better than my 101? See you again soon. Bye for now.